So let's have a look at installing the bearers. Now it seems quite an easy thing to do. Throw a big piece of timber on top of some posts. Seems fairly straightforward. And it is. Except there are a few things we need to be aware of. One is the direction of the bows. So when we pick up a piece of timber, very often it is not a straight piece of timber. Quite often they have slight bends in them. So when I look at this bearer here, you can see there is a bend in it or a bow. And it is important that that bow is always facing upwards. So that when the load from the floor or possibly the roof framing come down onto it, it's encouraging that bearer to push down and become straighter. If the bow is down, then the bow is only going to get worse under load. Now this bearer has a very big bow in it. I've exaggerated it a lot just to make a point. But hopefully you never have to deal with a piece of timber that's got that much of a bend in it. So that's direction of bows. So of course when these go in, they need to be nice and level with each other. That means all of our support structure has to be put in level. But sometimes you may have a situation where a post is maybe a little bit low or maybe you've got a big chunk of hardwood which is a bit thicker at one end than the other. You may have to pack up bearers so that they come level and straight with the rest of the bearers. And if you do, you need to pack it with something that's not going to compress over time. Don't go sliding bits of cardboard in there. It needs to be something solid like a piece of steel or a bit of hardwood, something that's not going to compress over time with load sitting on top of it. The other thing you've got to make sure of is that there is enough material for that bearer to sit on. Because I'm not very good at drawing things, even on a computer, I've just got a 70mm post straight under a bearer. Now if this is a piece of softwood, like a pine bearer, with heavy roof load on it, that would probably start crushing a little section of that bearer right in that space. Normally you would have a large metal plate across there which would spread the load out. Probably not a problem if this were a hardwood bearer because the hardwood is less likely to have the fibres of timber crush over time. But you do have to make sure that there is enough timber sitting on the post. And that becomes especially important if you need to join the bearer. Let's say we have this bearer installed in two sections. We need to know that there is enough timber sitting on the support to adequately hold it. And that information is in the 1684 clause number, and try and remember this clause number, 4.2.1.1. And if you pause the video and go and have a look at that, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about when it comes to joins in bearers. Let's talk about how bearers are fixed down. That is another clause in the 1684 or more specifically a table table 9.4 so that's another section you can have a look at when it comes to what's called nominal fixings which is the minimum amount of fixings that have to be in a piece of timber to hold it in place what happens if you need to drill a hole through a bearer so we need to drill some kind of a hole through to maybe get a plumbing pipe or something through, there are very strict restrictions on how often and how big holes can be drilled through things. And this one that I've quickly drawn here is way too big. There's no way that's legal. But if you go to clause 4.1.6, you will see what all the restrictions are on how big a holes you can drill through, how much you can check out. So for instance, if I need to take a check out of this bearer, let's say the post is a bit high, so I have to cut out a piece of bearer to sit on top of something. There's a restriction currently at the time of videoing this. I'm not allowed to check more than a quarter of the depth of that out according to that clause. So a 200 mil bearer cannot check any more than 50 mil out. And this is how it looks in the code. You'll notice in this area it says D slash 4. That means depth of the timber divided by 4. And that's how you read a code like that. Sometimes it'll have B times a number. That means the breadth or the thickness of the timber 
times that number. That's what those little codes mean. The other thing we're going to look at is cantilevers. When we install these, perhaps you're in a situation where that bearer has to cantilever out. There are also restrictions on how far you're allowed to cantilever that. And those restrictions are in table 4.2 and figure 4.8. So I'd encourage you to go and have a look at those tables and figures to research the restrictions around how far you can cantilever bearers out. So that's a basic rundown of installing bearers. They're not very difficult, really. It's just cut a big piece of timber and stick it on the post. But there are a few things you have to be careful of in regards to checkouts and holes, keeping them straight, and also whether or not they are continuous span or single spans, which hopefully you have already covered in a previous video. Thank you and good luck.